Hey everyone! Welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Arvind Rajan, I'm a pre-med in the US, and today I have the privilege of sharing my conversation with Ahmad Shahin, a medical student YouTuber at the Mayo Clinic. For those coming from his channel, welcome! I'm glad to have you here. You know, I had two main reasons why I want to talk to Ahmad, and the first one, you know, if you've watched his videos before, you can feel me on this one. But Ahmad's really good at inspiring people, and he does that through his videos by being completely, like, transparent in the matter he covers, right? He talks about his journey from pre-med to medical school and how he did it as well as the struggles. And I think that is very, very important. He also really cares about the people that watch his videos, right? Like I remember in the beginning, like I would comment, you know, on all his videos and he would just reply every single time and he'd say like, welcome back to the channel and things like that. And so it's obvious that he cares about his audience as well. In fact, when I DM'd him about this conversation, he remembered me from those YouTube comments and he was down. Now, the second reason is that I run a podcast called Medspectives where I interview healthcare professionals, you know, from around the world talking about their stories in medicine and their diverse perspectives into the world around us. Now, Ahmad isn't a health professional yet, but Medspectives as a project has really evolved and captured any facet of medicine that it can and i think medical students are a big part of that journey you know i didn't even know if he would respond he responded he agreed and we had an awesome conversation but yeah you know we talked about all kinds of stuff it was really Bro, just get really... out of the conversation already okay all right fine okay all right all right you know what Last thing before I play the conversation, I'm just gonna roll it. If you're new here, again, my name is Arvind. I make all kinds of content about being a pre-med, applying to med school, um, all thing, kinds of things like that with cool like cinematic sequences and drone shots. I try to make it really fun and, and fun to watch too. So, you know, if you're interested in any of that on, and much, much more, definitely consider subscribing. And without further ado, I will roll the conversation and I hope that you enjoy it. I remember in, in the beginning or even now, like you respond to literally all your comments and and that yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like in the beginning, like I'll be honest, like I saw that and I was like, dude, this is this guy is like he is no he's not doing it for, you know, the clout or anything. He's doing it because like he genuinely cares about these people and you you really get to know like all these people and I mean you know, there are always repeat commenters. And, and I remember one time I commented on one and then I commented on, on the next and you're like, hey bro, th great, great to see you again on the channel. And I was like, yo, he, re <laughs> he remembers me. And I was like, yo, this is awesome. But no, that, that's, I think that's, that's awesome about what you do. Yeah, man, hundred percent. When you sent me a DM and you're like, I'm not sure if you remember me, I'm like, is this guy crazy? Like, especially <laughs> now that I have like a name to the face because I pretty much remember most names, but especially since you have your picture and your YouTube comments, I put two and two together right away, man. And it's always funny to me because your reaction is similar to everyone else's, which is like, I can't believe like he could remember that comment. I'm like, that's the whole reason I'm doing this, fam. So like, if I didn't, yeah. what's the point? And yeah. now I'm not gonna lie, I, it has, I haven't been able to get to every single one just because, I mean, we talked yeah, about this yeah. a little bit off, off air, which is like, it's been pretty crazy. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. Like I wanna be able to level with everyone and say, yeah, you can have balance in med school and stuff, but it's also med school and I'm also not like the world's best student. So sometimes I let things kind of pile on or maybe they just pile on regardless of like how well I prepare. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's fun for sure. I mean, like, why yeah. why do all this if you don't do that? Exactly. And I mean, even if you don't respond, like I can clearly see you look at them all because like you're always like harding them all and, and, and seeing what we have to say, which is which is awesome, man. And um, I mean, that's that's kind of what I really saw on your channel that was different than others. It's like that that level of interaction of with your audience and I mean from from the other people that 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 you know are following you on your journey like we all think the same thing I'm sure and 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 you're really an inspiration for us all man you touched my heart today every other time you commented it's that's another thing too people think oh he gets so many of these like he probably doesn't care yo every time it touches me for real yeah. and I'm like thinking to myself internally this is gonna die off but so far it hasn't and so far it yeah. still like gasses me up which is, I'm being pretty informal on this on this whole thing. I hope that's fine. That's fine. No, that's uh, fine. And if I say anything outrageous, please feel free to, <laughs> to bleep me or whatever. Uh, but but yeah, man, I mean, I, I still feel as if I just started, which is like a honeymoon phase. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's, it's, it's continuing. So I'm not going to jinx it. I'm going to try not to, but so far, yeah. so good. 
Yeah, I mean, you keep it real, dude. And I think the, one thing that you um, said in one of your videos, and I, w- I was watching back a couple, um, but you're like, people don't like to talk about their failures, and I'm here to do that. And and you said something along those lines, and I was like, I mean, this, this is what people are listening for, because, you know, it's like you said, it's a tough journey. Med school is rough, man, and you're living it right now. And so, like... So that's awesome. But I, I'm curious, like, how did you decide, you know, in the beginning that you wanted to make a YouTube channel? And, you know, that's something that you you were interested in. This question, understandably, comes up a lot. And yeah. as many times as I get it, I still can't find the perfect answer because it was mm-hmm. kind of bizarre how it all happened. Uh, if I'm giving you like the full unfiltered story, I, I had a pretty easy uh, it was technically spring semester, maybe towards the summer. I can't remember exactly when this was my right. senior year. I had everything secured, I was chill, and I got a lot of time to reflect. And I I really took advantage of that. I started reading more books, et cetera, doing things for me. And one of those things, which sounds super corny, but was a really big deal for me, uh, was just reflecting in the morning. I would stretch, because I'm I'm 22, but I have the the body in terms of joints of like a 40 year old. So I was like (laughs) stretching a lot in the mornings. And that was my time to just think. And I had this idea, and I'm, I'm, I'm literally, cutting nothing out here. This is actually I think yeah, this sure. the first time I've told this whole story uh, to anyone really. But I, I was just I was just thinking and I've always had this idea of starting something in terms of mentorship or any anything along those lines to a wider audience. But I always told myself for some reason, we'll do it after med school. Mm. And the reasons at the time made a lot of sense in my head, which were like, uh, Nobody cares what you have to say. Understandably, I would have no, like, I don't know what the word is, like, uh, credentials or anything yeah, to be saying. Credibility, yeah. Credibility, exactly. Uh, why would anyone care? I need to focus on myself also because, like, I'm not trying to drop out. So it was all <laughs> these thoughts. And then it was one morning. It was a feeling that I haven't, if I've had it before, I can't recall it, where there was just, like, a click and, like, a, a bunch of ideas just started flowing. in. it's like, wait a minute, you're just scared. What if we did this mm. now? What if we started working towards this? And I can't even begin to explain. I, I legit got up. I, I stopped stretching and I was legit yeah. pacing around my room. It was a bizarre experience. And there was a million thoughts going through my head. And as far as why, I think like any anything that will go far or you commit to, it's a mix of selfish and selfless reasons. Like, of course, I want to give back, but there's also a lot that I get personally out of it. So it was that combination of the two which and it just seemed like everything was telling me you have to do this right now. So yeah. I started working towards it. I started preparing. I started doing my research. I bought some equipment, like my laptop, uh, the one that I was using for undergrad. I can't yeah, you showed it in a explain. bunch of videos. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're an OG, man. You remember. I can't even begin to explain how slow, like trash it was. I mean, it was great for the time. Like, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful to have it. I know a lot of people didn't even have that going through undergrad. But I'm like, all right, if I want to be serious about this, let's let's get to work. So. That's the very long-winded answer, but I wanted to give you the full thing. Call it a MedSpectives uh, exclusive. But yeah. that, that's, that's why I started, man. It was just, I realized I was just scared. And it started a whole trend, not just in terms of social media, but in general of like asking myself, are you actually scared right now? Or do you have a good reason not to do this? And it's kind of snowballed in every area of my life. And I don't know, man. I just got lucky. I'm very thankful yeah. for that moment, but I, I wonder sometimes, what if I didn't have that? What if I didn't stretch, yeah. I guess? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great story. And, you know, this this concept of making videos and, and sharing this information is, um, I mean, I, I know that you're a fan of Ali Abdal and, and I watch a lot of his videos, but, you know, he, in one of his videos, I think it was the one where he reflects on why he, like, quit medicine for a year, but he talked about, like, the relative value of, like, him making videos for people or you know being or working on the front lines and he basically talked about this concept of like if he's making these videos he's basically impacting you know like hundreds of thousands of people in a way to motivate them towards medicine you know basically creating new more doctors and um you know sharing effective study techniques and things like that versus you know if he focused all his time working on the front lines which of course is very important he kind of compared the like the fact that he he isn't relatively skilled compared to you know the top uh, doctors that are very important to be in the front lines right now, and said that his mm-hmm. contribution there wouldn't be as great here. And I I just bring that up because this um, 
the value that you've provided through, you know, you're sharing your journey, right? You basically, in a way, saved more lives before, you know, you've even started working as a doctor in a way, because you're, you're sharing tips, you know, on the MCAT, sharing tips on how you made it through med school and things like that, that people find a lot of value. And, you know, I find a lot of value in that because one, like you're sharing good tips and two, you're sharing, you know, a personality of someone that's gone through it and been successful through it. And so, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's a greater value too of the, of the entire process. I appreciate you saying that. The one thing I have to fight you back on is you mentioned uh, saving lives. That's a bit of a stretch, but at the same time, uh, it's it's surreal to me sometimes, which even though I know like it's incremental or it's marginal, the amount that any one video, the, the utility any one video is going to bring is not life changing. But I, I like math, like I'm a numbers guy. And when I really sit down and try to put it all together, it's a huge motivator to keep going because I was thinking to myself, towards the very beginning, I'm like, why not just spend more time mentoring individually? Because I did that for years uh, in a lot of different capacities, some in like a very friendship, uh, unorganized way, some in a volunteering way, etc. And I don't think I get, I don't want to say anything in absolutes, but it's hard to think of something that gives me more satisfaction. So I'm like, why not just do more of that? But I wanted a little bit more of a different flavor. And I'm very familiar with the uh, the Ali Abdal video you're talking about. And yeah. it's, it's funny, he, he very much uh, tells it how it is. And there's a lot of yeah. sentences in there when you like pluck them out. It's like, hold on, like this yeah, sounds out of context, terrible it's, in yeah. a vacuum. But th- yeah. that's, that's something I really looked up to him for. And I mean, which, which uh, I think it'd be hard to find a single person in the medical school or medical student space who hasn't been or isn't influenced by him. And I was, mm-hmm. I mean, in a million ways, but one of them is like, it, just just be yourself say what you want to say and mm-hmm. and so what if I, it's all in your head like stuff that your team's yeah. gonna go bad etc as long as you know or you think that you're actually doing something positive then you're probably going to be fine and he was a uh, i could go on about him for days so so i won't get yeah. on that train but yeah <laughs> man, he's a he's a big deal to me he is i mean like i mean i'll be honest like he's why i started this podcast why i started a youtube channel you know it's, it's still very small but uh, you know all these ventures that you know i've dreamed about since i was 12 when i first made like minecraft videos <laughs> you know <laughs> and just recording my, myself uh play random things with my prepubescent voice and stuff but no nah, like it was <laughs> it was a good time i mean and that was something like at that age like this is a dream you know being like making videos like this and, and stuff like that would be really cool i mean I guess for you, when you started, like, were there struggles, you know, getting um, used to or learning how to make videos and, you know, talk in front of a camera and things like that? Because I'll be honest, like the first videos I was watching of you, like you're you were confident. And so there, there's this there's this thing where like people say that you need to edit yourself sometimes, like, you know, if you're not as good as ta- at talking and things like that, you know, and to make it engaging and, and things like that. But I remember like you kept viewers engaged in the beginning just by the way you talked of, because of how like, I don't know how well you structured things and stuff. And, you know, I keep, I keep like kind of hyping you up. I'm not meaning to, and I'm sorry like, if, if that, that makes you feel a little weird, but I'm just being honest. And, and th- you know, that's what I felt. I, I appreciate your honesty though. I have to disagree with you or at least I'll give you an insider perspective that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Were there struggles? Oh my gosh, where do I start? For real. (laughs) Like nothing about this screamed that it would be a success. And until now, like, I I mean, let me start from the beginning. I never edited a video. I am the worst. (laughs) I know I don't take photos. Like that's not my main thing. But I think Mm -hmm. photo, video are pretty similar. And I'm always the last person to either care or ask for any of those. So no experience there. Actually, something as simple as someone coming up to me being like, yo, can you take a picture of like our family? <laughs> if my sister's next to me, I'll be like, hey, yo, she's got you. I don't want to screw up your family day. And again, I, I keep on uh, speaking too informally. But, but regardless, like that, that didn't make any sense. Editing, zero skills, zero knowledge, mm-hmm. like absolute ground zero. And speak, public speaking, I will admit, that is something that I consider a strength. But it's very different than talking to camera to a camera because right. I mean, you know this, I'm trying to explain it in a way that other people will understand. It is just completely unnatural to speak yeah. to a lens at first, I, unless you have some sort of experience with it. Like I'm happy that you think that the MCAT video was me being confident, but I, I've actually addressed this in a, another video. I think it was, um, 
the I met someone in medical school where I kind of showed yeah. the progression of me filming that video that one, yeah. 10 different times. I, another thing, no understanding of lighting, no understanding of, of cuts, etc. So it was only struggles at the beginning. And now I'm very grateful for, for how far this has come. It's still beyond my belief or imagination. But at the beginning, when you're getting like 12 views and like six of them are yours, that was me for a long time. And that can be very discouraging. Like I, you have to know from the beginning that that's coming your way. Because if you just like put your heart and soul into something, and then it's either received poorly or not received at all, mm-hmm. that that can kind of suck. So I mean, I could go on, and until now, I mean, there's tr- plenty of struggles uh, until now that I'm still working on. And I mean, if there were no struggles, it wouldn't be fun. But at yeah. the same time, they can be frustrating. So I completely get what you mean. For sure, and in the beginning, um, so you made a lot of a lot of videos in the beginning, especially with the with the MCAT ones. How did you like, or when when was that point where you saw like that change in I guess being noticed? Right, you you, you mentioned like having like twelve views and things like that in the beginning. How long did it take before you know people started recognizing you and people started noticing you and um, and watching your stuff? Uh, I, it's all relative, of course. I'll preface with that, but. I think it's when I started to do more. There were two main videos that helped everything start. One was a medical school like acceptance slash decision reaction. And the other, the other one was a first day of medical school vlog. Yeah. Now, those were both calculated decisions. I knew that those things were popular. But at the same time, there's a lot that's going into this. I'll give you my full thought process. One of them was I wanted to have a little bit of background into video making, et cetera, before I jumped into those because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't want to screw up my chance. And the other one was I didn't think I had earned earned it yet because I mm. think the number one thing that has gotten me anywhere is the thought, the ever-present thought that nobody cares about you. And that, that sounds negative, but it's not. I, I think it's the best advice you can give is that you can't come up to a camera with zero subscribers and say, Hey guys, this is what I did today, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like the, the whole point is that you need to earn their respect. That's why so many of my original videos are very, uh, I, I mean, if you watch them through, they're very, I think, dense and helpful in an objective sense. They're not very entertaining. And mm-hmm. that's something that I've, I'm trying to incorporate now, which is make them just as informative, but also entertaining. It's That's something that I'm, I'm uh, nowhere near perfect in, but it's it's a lesson learned along the way. But to get back to the original point of, things that like helped cause growth it's when you start to show your personality but you can only do that if you give them a reason to stay so it has to be a mix of you being who you are plus a topic that people care about and once you grow and get established and I still don't think I'm up to that point yet personally but everyone's different once you get to that point you can start putting out those videos that your favorite youtubers make like Ali Abdal where he talks for yeah. 30 minutes about Hey guys, it's going to be a rambling chatty video and I will always watch those all the exactly. way through because I love the guy, but nobody knows who I am. So I think that's the best advice that I could give and also answers your question of when did you see the difference is when you give people a reason to care, talk about something they are already interested in, don't reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. And also once you get to that point, recycle old ideas when you're getting established, but be yourself. Otherwise, who cares? You're just another yeah. video. Right. And uh, you bring up that, that video that, um, you know, day in the life of a med student. And, and I remember that was the first video I watched. Uh, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. That's the first one I saw. It was recommended to me on my page. And I scroll. I mean, whenever I watch a video, I scroll to the comments first. You know, that's kind of the way I judge <laughs> yeah. judge videos. Same. And the first first comment, and it still is the first comment now, it was, bro, based on the thumbnail, I thought this was a TikTok boy pretending to be a doctor <laughs> for views. Oh, <laughs> man. And I was like, like, cause I watched a little bit. I was like, this is exactly, you know, what I think too. But then I, I, I watched the whole thing, and I was like, I could not have been more wrong. And then I went into a rabbit hole into the rest of your channel, like you said, like you, you bring them in with something, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. get people to watch it. <laughs> Just is crazy. No, man. I mean, and that's the thing. That was, a, if I'm being honest, that was a huge point that I had to overcome in terms of being uncomfortable. Even the thought of posting. I mean, it was a selfie. Like, again, I have no photography experience. I wouldn't have been able to take another picture. But the, the idea of posting a picture of me in scrubs especially was mm-hmm. a huge hurdle because I'm like, who am I to do 
to represent medical students. I don't deserve, I, I don't have the right, like what gives me, I was being very critical of myself, but not in an overly negative way. I think they were relatively valid. I've come to understand now that, no, I don't, I don't necessarily represent medical students at all. I'm just giving people my perspective, my experience, and that's all that it is. As long as you don't pretend like it's more than that, you're totally mm -hmm. fine. But the idea of posting a day in the life with me and Scrubs, honestly, man, I, I've i considered myself very like secure and very confident with who I am, yeah. but that was a huge hurdle for me. And I mean, it did bits like relative to the rest for, for reasons that I already knew I'm going to be honest, you never know how well a video is going to do, but I just had done so much research into that field in general. That was one of the only videos I posted on like, I know this is going to, this is going to accelerate things. Not to that extent, like it was, it went really well, but I, mm -hmm. I knew it was going to do well. Yeah. Yeah. And you took that risk, especially like you said, you didn't, you might've not been comfortable doing it, but that's the only way you're really going to grow is taking those risks. That's cool. 100%. I mean... I don't want to talk about YouTube the entire time. And I know that you've had some some really, really cool experiences outside of that. And so I'm kind of curious of like, you've gone through about a year of med school, right? Like almost, you're almost done with your first year. Is that right? Yeah, we have about what? Uh, oh my gosh, two months. That's it. Yeah. Oh my done. God. Yeah. How has that been? Especially like doing it all online, like meeting your class. Like I, I couldn't even imagine, man. Where do I start? Uh, I'll take you through it quickly. Mm -hmm. It has easily been the most fulfilling year of education of my life. Mm. And I know it would have been more so had it not been for COVID, but it still is regardless. I think that's the best short summary I can give. It's also, of course, been the most challenging, but yeah. it's stuff that you want to learn and you've worked, you've worked, you've given up everything to get to this point and it doesn't disappoint, especially because you know how hard you work to get here. Like I know some people are shoe-ins like, and they have these beautiful stories and like they were born with like, uh, I don't know, everything it takes. But but for most yeah. of us, we got to grind to get there. We got to jump through all those hoops that nobody wants to jump through. I mean, I don't even got to name them. Like anyone who's pre-med watching this knows. Uh, so it feels good. I'm not going to lie. And it's sometimes you go a little bit numb just trying to survive. But most of the time, it's excellent. And to answer your question about my classmates, it's the same thing. Uh, I still remember... Just it, this is gonna this is gonna sound corny, but yeah, everyone says this, and I feel like everyone says it for a reason. But I honestly picked my school. A huge factor was the culture, and it didn't disappoint at all. And it's the same story as how medical school feels because I love my classmates to death. I think they're I literally could not have asked for better in any way. Yeah. Had it not been for COVID, it would be times two. But even with that, with COVID, it's still it's still pretty excellent. Yeah, I love that mindset, dude. Like you're, you know, it's it, COVID is an inconvenience, but regardless, this has been an awesome experience. I love that. I love that. Um, so have you been able to, I guess, like interact with them? Like what is, I guess, the extent of like online versus being able to, I guess, go into the hospital and, and things like that? So we're not in the hospital too much. We, we can, but when we go, it's especially in first year, at least for us. I don't want to speak on like other schools, but it's very much individual because you get to choose when you go for different subjects. It's a kind of a long story. Long story short, uh, it's mostly at the school where you're going to mm. see each other. And anatomy was our second block. And what that means is basically it was like seven weeks into the curriculum ish. And that's when we really started getting close because that's when we went in person. It was very strict. Uh, I mean, masks, obviously, but even on top of that, we had a big room for where all the donors were, AKA mm -hmm. like the cadavers. And there's like one person per, at, per table, plus uh, the, the TA or the preceptor or the whatever who's helping you. And other than that, you go in with your group, you come out, it's, that's it. But even with that like little window, we found a way to get really close and it started building off from there. And mm -hmm. at this point we're, I don't know about everyone, but I think the vast majority of us are vaccinated. So we have like a little bit more wiggle room and overall, man, I mean, we started out doing Zoom stuff. We all really wanted to make it work. I think that's the key is that it's not like I was like, hey, guys, like, let's let's get something going. And everyone's like, leave me alone. Like, everyone <laughs> no, yeah. wanted to, to get together. So yeah. it was it was a recipe for success. And, and we kind of we moved around the we moved around the hurdles, I guess. 
Yeah. No, I mean, like when I think about medical school, like that's kind of the thing I'm the most excited about, really, is just because in undergrad, you have people like studying this, studying that. And it's cool to have that kind of diversity. But being in an environment where everyone is kind of hoping to do or go into the same field and is extremely passionate about it, like that must be a vibe like that must be quite, you know, <laughs> a surrounding to be in. Hey, well, a vibe is the best way to explain it. And it's, yeah. it's seriously special. And trust me, I love like, especially because I went to a big college. I love the diversity of it. And that's really special and unique. But so is this. It's, it's two flavors mm-hmm. that both taste really sweet, but they're pretty unique at the same time. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a medical school interview, but I wanted to ask you, how did you <laughs> oh, decide? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's, in essence, why medicine? Like what made you decide to go into medicine is i hope this isn't giving you like flashbacks nah, nah, you, or anything, you good, but you good, you good, you it's good. a common question that a bunch of people ask and it's something i wondered myself enough time has passed from the interviews where it doesn't scar me too much <laughs> this is this is the short answer which i think is a combination of the best answer and the most concise i've known i wanted i've wanted to be a doctor for a really really long time since i, I had a extremely influential teacher in the sixth grade and she turned me on to it. She wasn't, it was just a biology class, but it was all about the human body. It wasn't your typical bio class. And that's where it started. Of course, you're a sixth grader. You don't know anything about what a, being a doctor is. You don't know yeah. the first, actually, even until college, I remember I was in a pre-health club and the first speaker was a PA. I'm like, what the heck is a PA? Yeah, like exactly. even going into college, I knew that I knew about doctors and nurses and like pharmacists. And obviously, there's so, so much more to healthcare. But the point I'm trying to get at is I knew from a young age, but the reasons were very underdeveloped until later. And then college is when I started exploring, started being really critical of what I wanted to do. Because I told myself, like, yo, if you don't want to be a doctor, like, I, I allowed myself to be honest with myself. So I was very critical of the profession, of the pre-med path, of what I was put, getting myself into so that I would be able to slip out of it well, either either stay within healthcare as something else or completely change my mind i left my i left that option on the table but i just kind of fell more into love with it and then that's the story and honestly it's the only career path i've ever seriously considered because uh it took me an embarrassingly long time to realize i wouldn't make it into the nba so i was like i'm gonna be an nba player for the longest time oh like, really I, yeah, yeah yeah so it was basically that or a doctor and I'm glad I I'm glad I grew out of that first one pretty quick, but uh, yeah, that's 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 pretty much my uh, why medicine short story. Oh man, no, that's awesome. Wasn't there an NBA player that went and became a no? I can't remember. No, not NBA. I think it was. Like I know a there are like tons of football players. Yeah, maybe maybe NBA. Actually, man, it's uh, I, I've heard of some like people applying to med school now who were, were legit in the NFL. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to speak too much on it because I don't know all the details, but uh, yeah. pe- pretty much are getting pretty impressive these days. What can I exactly, say? Exactly. Exactly. Non-traditional to the next level, man. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of your interests, though, like when you look at medicine, you know, it's such a it's such a huge field. I mean... Like you said, you kind of narrowed it down a little bit in, in, in undergrad and then a little more, in, you know, maybe in your first year of med school. And of course, like, uh, you know, when I came into when I came into high school, I was like, you know, I want to be cardiologist. Then I shadowed yeah. a surgeon and I was like, I want to be a surgeon because that's so cool. You get to cut people open and stuff. Then in college, I've like shadowed surgeons. I've listened to their like life and and heard like how difficult it is and how time consuming and how much of it, of your life it takes up. And now I'm like. Surgery is still cool, but I don't know <laughs> if it's that cool in order, you know, if I want to shift my entire life to just, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And so now I'm in a place where, like, I'm so open and that, like, I really don't really have a, a certain type of specialty that I'm interested. In, but, you know, conditions like diabetes, like, you know, that's that is super interesting to me. And um, the fact that it can, like, devastate, like, any per, any kind of person in any with any other conditions and how debilitating it is is just insane to me. Um, and I'm just curious to, to hear, like, how what were your interests in medicine, like, specifically, and how have those developed in your time as a pre-med and then now as a medical student? That's a really good question, and I'll preface it by saying this. There are a few things that I wish I could announce, like, public broadcast and have every pre-med know. One of them is you don't need to know at all what specialty you want to do and the second thing is 
your, I get this question all the time. I, I have mm-hmm. to slip this in here. Your major does not make any difference whatsoever as far as what specialty you're going to go into. Now, I know that you know that, but I, I can't even tell you how many people don't yeah. because I have so many. And this was even before any YouTube, anything. Um, I'm lucky enough that people, I guess, trusted me enough for, for opinions. And they'd be coming out of high school, coming out of high school, and they're like, I'm pretty sure I want to do neurosurgery, so I have to do <laughs> neuroscience, right? And I... I got that so many times yes. at so many different levels. I'm like, please, please just hear, because no one believes this. The, the major does not matter. You could do dance. I actually, there's a, a friend of mine from undergrad who did dance as a major. She is, she's just the most incredibly well-prepared and well-rounded applicant going in, but no one would believe it until they saw, until they saw her succeed. So I'm trying to get back up. Your main point was uh, my specialty stuff. All right. Um, I realized pretty early on that I don't know anything about how wide of a field medicine is. And I can very easily be influenced by what I'm familiar with. So for example, I I mean, as someone who doesn't have doctors for parents or anything like that, it's a similar story to what I told you about before. Like I didn't know that PAs existed. I didn't know what the heck radiation oncology was. I didn't know what pathology was. And realizing that was important for me to help me realize be a blank slate and keep your options open because it's so easy to get one track minded, especially with competitive specialties. So, but to answer your question, I don't want to just like completely ignore it. Like I, I was a urology scribe for two years and I, and I'll, I'll elaborate on this a little bit. I had the probably, I'm trying to think of a single flaw, the most wholesome physician you could ever meet as a person I was scribing for, for two awesome. years. And that made me fall in love with urology. But I started asking myself, do you like this because you know it? And also, do you like this because you had a dope mentor? And then I was realizing, I don't know anything about anything, just relax and you'll figure it out in med school. And until now, I'm, uh, I'm an open book, or that's not the right word, I'm a blank slate, I'm, I'm absorbing things, I have some interests, but I haven't experienced enough to confidently say, I wanna do op- ophthalmology or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Even surgery yeah. versus medicine, I'm not sure yet. I mean, both. that's the beauty of medicine, though. There's so much that you're into. You can't really go wrong. So that's very comforting. Like, if I don't choose one specialty, I'm still going to be pretty happy, I think. Yeah. And the, I think the annoying part, too, is that whenever you tell someone you want to be a doctor, they're like, oh, what kind of doctor? And you're just like, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you don't know? But it's like, people, like, you, and you pointed this out in your videos, like, people are just not, like, as familiar with the process. And, and one, how long it is. And two, like, the, the steps that are involved in it and i mean i guess that's kind of like the societal thing where like people in high school you know especially then you have to interact with a lot of adults i remember back then like you know every time you we went to a family friend's house they would ask me the same stuff and so i guess you're like conditioned to want to have some kind of concrete answer there without like necessarily that much backing which is like i mean it doesn't hurt necessarily well it kind of hurts but i mean as long as you're not too stuck on it i think is is the is the big thing yeah, I, I think a lot of people trash, and there's a, a little bit of a, well, regardless, a lot of people trash people who say, I want to be a pediatric neurosurgical <laughs> cardiovascular surgeon, etc. Yeah. And I think it comes a little bit out of, you're kind of laughing not at the person, but out of the, kind of the naive, naive state that naive. they're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not, you can't necessarily blame them for that, but I actually kind of like it in a way. Like, if you watch Grey's Anatomy, I, I'm not familiar with the show, I've, I've yeah, I know that's very uncultured of me to say in this in this space, but if you no, watch a certain doctor and they were like a cardiologist and that's what got you into medicine, I personally see no problem with that. Uh, but you're still going to get these like medical students who kind of will laugh at you for that. And it's just because they know, like I was just talking to someone who was a fourth year, actually several of them, they changed in their fourth year of med school. Like imagine that that's just assurance to me that I need more time to experience all of this and relax like it's gonna be all right yeah yeah and it's it's interesting to compare to other countries too right like when you think of the uk or even india like they go into medical school straight out of high school and so and part of me is like part of me is like okay that's cool and i kind of wish we had some kind of program like that because you know I've been decided, like you said, you've been decided maybe not particularly what you want to do, but that we want to do medicine. So that would be cool. But then also the the concept of like 
thinking back on like the last even three years of, of undergrad, and I'm sure you for your, your four years of undergrad, like you were a completely different person before then. And your maturity <laughs> level for going to medicine would have been completely different. And the amount you would have gotten out of med school, I feel like also would be different. And it's just interesting to compare between like different systems and in, in different countries. I think I think we're I don't want to say the lucky ones, but I know a lot of people who change their mind and I, I've had this conversation a million times and even after a million times, I don't know which one I would put in if I were like, I don't know, king of the country. So mm -hmm. it's it's like, uh, I don't know, it's just it's different. I don't think one is better. It's just it's strange yeah. to compare, though. Yeah, because I would always like like um, not like our system. I would be like, why do you have to do eight years of this stuff? But the more I get used to it, I'm like, this makes sense in a way because no one's gonna be able to just you know stumble into medicine with like mediocre scores and 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 things like that. They're gonna have to want to get into medicine and things like that. So, I mean, it's 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 a, it's an interesting system, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, so I asked. Um, a bunch I asked on my Instagram story questions and, and things that you know people might have questions f for you about and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time but hey I, I got plenty of time man no I, honestly you get to a point where it's like well how productive will I be like my brain is so fried at this point I, I think you know this it's uh it's closer to my bedtime than I'd care to admit so it's like yeah, you're fine man just keep going okay cool 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 all right yeah, yeah. so um all right, what is one thing that you wish you knew before you went to med school? Hmm, and you really answer good question. This. Yeah. Wait, so, say again? No, like you might have, because I know you made a Q&A recently, um, and I didn't, I didn't run through what questions were asked there. <laughs> no, you're good, man. I'll, I'll tell you, and even so, it's a different audience. Um, don't think there's anything that I would really change going back. I think I approached it in a way that I don't really regret. I think I have a good balance so far of, you know, studying hard, but also not stressing too much. If you asked me before pre-med, it would be easier just because there were a thousand misconceptions. But now I feel like there's not much to do other than just do your best and focus on your work. So I know it's not a very satisfying answer, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't really think of anything. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think I agree with you too, because I feel like by the time you're done with your pre-med stuff, you're like, you kind of expect, I mean, not, not necessarily exactly what's going to happen, but you're, you're in a much better mindset, I think, than before that whole process, because, you know, the amount of people that drop pre-med, you know, going through that process is just crazy. I was talking to an admissions director, actually, at, at Case Western, or the, yeah, um, um, yesterday, and he was, he was talking about, and he, he said this, he was like, there's no one that works harder than pre-meds and he compared it to medical students in a way because of, you know, in medical school, you have to co co cover a lot, like you're, like you said, but I feel like in pre-med, there's just like so many facets of different things and levels of confusion. Um, and, and this is something I also want to ask you about, but sometimes as a pre-med, it feels like it's your job to be confused. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I think the reason I, I'd love to do as many of these uh, kind of questions and answers at this moment is because pre-med is so fresh for me and I'm happy I made those videos too so that I can never forget which is that I hope I never pretend or convince myself that I knew what I was doing in pre-med because you're just constantly reacting to whatever you heard last you're constantly comparing yourself I don't I don't care how secure you are it is impossible not to think am I good enough compared to this person and it has nothing to do with I want to be better than Arvind it's that Arvind did this much and got this far. How do I stack up? Because I want to get that far, not because I want to be better than you. But you're right. Like confusion is just, there's so much mixed messaging. And part, it comes from two, two reasons primarily. One is just a lot of stuff is straight up wrong. Like mm -hmm. I don't need to go into the terrible advice. I'm sure you've heard plenty of it. And the second is both pieces of advice work, but they conflict. I, I've uh, had this conversation with some people who ask me questions about admissions and uh, send me their personal statements or whatever. And they say, well, this person told me this and this person told me this. And I tell them they're both right. It depends. Like what flavor is your application going to be? It's not like they only will take one. It's just, it's constant confusion. And I don't disagree with what that case Western uh, admissions director said, because it's a different type of stress. And the reason is pre-med, you never know if what you're doing is enough. 
Whereas yes. in med school, it, you know what? In med school, it's it's similar depending on how if you want to go into a competitive specialty or not. Honestly, the pre med stuff kind of comes back. Uh, mm-hmm. At least talking to some people who are applying to those. But in general, if I do my flashcards every day, if I do my practice questions every day, I probably know I'm going to be fine. It's a lot of work, but it's not the existential dread of like I will have to completely restructure my life even after burning three years or four years or five years if this doesn't work out for whatever reason. And if I get rejected, nobody needs to tell me why. That crushes you. So yeah. it's it's something that I, I, will ever, uh, I will forever be ready to help pre-meds because it's just nobody deserves to go through that, but we all have to. Yeah, it's, it's that level of uncertainty, right? Like whether you're fresh in a research lab and trying to learn how to do a PCR, you're like, uh, like screwing like I swear like in my time in a lab I've made I've made every single possible mistake you can <laughs> making a PCR gel like forgetting this um spilling this like every single possible mistake and I've been doing it for three years and I still make mistakes and mm-hmm. then shadowing it's like shadowing is is fun to extend but sometimes you know you're just like the the, the doctor's tail and you know the doctor will stop to talk to someone and you're like you're just like mm, twiddling your thumbs like thinking what you should do and it's just this this state of confusion that I think is a, it's it sucks sometimes, but it's also like thinking back on it, it's like a rite of passage and a very very big learning opportunity. I think, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's I think what really makes you, I feel like mature enough and ready enough to to tackle what med school is. I completely agree with you. Yeah, man, and we'll move on to another question. Let's see. Oh, this I like this one. Um, if he wasn't in med school, where would he be right now? Oh, my, the amount of times I've thought of this and gotten concerned because I didn't have a great answer. Uh, you know, in pre-med, I was lucky enough to have maintained the mindset, whether it was a mindset based off of insanity or not, that I never had a plan B. And mm. I think I have very mixed feelings about that advice. People will say, if you have a plan B, that means you're not focusing everything towards your plan A. Yeah. Now, that's, that's great advice sometimes, but what if it really is just something that's out of your reach? You never know that until you try. So... It's a hard question for me to answer because I never got to that point where I had a plan B and I never really considered it too much. I think it would have to be something where I can have some sort of mentorship role and it's also something where I can have, I don't have to be changing someone's life or being their savior or anything like that, but I have a something that I would be able to like, you know, go to bed satisfied with, sleep at night with. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but at the same time, what I do, I, I can be very guilty, even for mm-hmm. things that I shouldn't be. So just knowing that about myself and being like hyper aware of like, am I doing what's right or not, or at least something that I can defend or not, that would probably be a big influence into my career choice. Like my biggest nightmare is selling a product I don't believe in, or just being a uh, having to make a pitch for something where in the back of my mind, I know I don't actually think this, that's my worst nightmare. So anything that avoids that and hopefully gives people a little bit of benefit is probably something I would go for. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a really, really good point. And I, I, I think about this sometimes and like, personally, I feel like, you know, if I go into med, well, I mean, I am going into medicine, become a doctor, a, a fun retirement career or, you know, not, something too stressful would just to be to teach you know and to teach yep. classes and things like that i mean i feel like that's such like an a rewarding aspect and i'm sure you experience this all the time like with with helping with helping pre-meds and stuff yeah. teaching teaching is a huge deal for me tutoring teaching mentoring anything in between uh i'd probably gravitate towards that too yeah and i mean doctors in a way are teachers right like you teach your patients in a way that you are saving their lives in in ways and and patient education i feel like is i mean i'm just i'm pre-med like spouting kind of (laughs) random stuff but i feel like it's one of the most important things you're 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 completely right and uh, everyone's different you know some surgeons maybe think that the most rewarding aspect is going in and manually fixing the problem some people Mm. might think that the most rewarding thing is in clinic where you're you know you're uh teaching someone about you know how to avoid certain pathology uh disease pathologies etc but you can almost never go wrong. So it's, it's a pretty safe bet. But if you want to be a teacher, I mean, you get plenty of that as a doctor. And people might think, I mean, in the classroom, I teach in medical school, not. Like, 
just your patience. Teaching is a yeah. big part of medicine. And that's, that's what some people don't understand about the interview process or the application process. Like, why do they care if I've done this or done that? Or why do they care if I've had a leadership position? It all comes back in the end to make, because you could be the most brilliant mind, but if you can't talk to someone, you're not going to be a brilliant doctor. So that, that's just the bottom line. So it, when you come out of it, it makes sense. It's still traumatizing to go through all of that, but it makes sense at the end. For real, man. Um, all right. Another question. Let's see. Um, how did you know a medical field was the right path? We kind of talked about that. So I a little bit, a little you, bit. Ask you that one again. But um, how competitive is med school? And you talked about this earlier about how collaborative you feel like it is sometimes. But I feel like you can still have that imposter syndrome and that feeling of, like you said earlier, like my classmate doing this and it's not because i feel like you know i want to be better than them but it's because like i feel like i can also be doing similar things how how does that factor into your thinking process and going through med school i want to be very careful to not make the generalization that my school experience is everyone else's because i really lucked out in that regard and it's not completely luck i had the opportunity to choose and that's something i weighed heavily in my decision because there's two types of competition there's one where you're pushing each other to be better, but you're not doing anything to tear each other down. And then it doesn't even have to be tearing each other. People always assume the worst, like you're sabotaging someone's experiments or you're sending them notes that are messed up. It's not even that, but just the knowing in the back of your head that this person probably wants what's best for me is very comforting and it can make a big difference. So I go to a pass fail school. And on top of that, there's no AOA, which is a, a way that you rank internally. And to me, that was a big deal. And as much as I would like to say that myself and all of my classmates would act exactly the same if that was different, I just don't think that's a reality. If I had grades to worry about and if I had to, or if I wanted to be like the top rank, I would have to spend a lot more time studying, a lot less balance in my life, probably live less healthily and you know, in a well-rounded state but because I can be assured that it's okay to take a step back, it's not always a rat race, then I can have a little bit more flexibility. I can pursue interests like obviously YouTube, et cetera. But how competitive is med school? It depends where you go and it depends how competitive you want to be. Because if you're trying to get into something like pediatrics, which is generally considered to be a little bit easier to get into versus something like neurosurgery, which is generally considered to be significantly more challenging, it's going to completely impact your experience. So if you're the type of person who wants to have something to shoot for and be competitive, med school will definitely have that for you. If you're just trying to pass, you can still do that. That's totally fine. As long as you're comfortable with the decision you're making, because if you see, if you're the type of person to see everyone else around you doing something and then be wondering, wait, do I have to do that too? Feel like maybe insecure or self-conscious or am I not good enough? then that's going to be a problem. But if you know what you want and you want to have a balanced life and you're not going to be swayed by some other person studying in the library pretty much like 18 hours a day and sleeping too, if you're okay with seeing that and ignoring it, you're also going to be fine. Because just because there are rankings doesn't mean you have to care. So I think it's what you make it, just like pre-med, just like anything else. And if you're worried about one thing or the other, you're going to be fine. Just know what you're looking for when you apply. Right. And kind of define what, what you want. And it's interesting to see like how medical schools and how the process seems to be kind of changing. You know, you're seeing more like with USMLE step one, right? Turn from turn into pass fail schools also um, adopting this pass fail system. And I, I they're all good changes, I feel like, because it's it's now seeming like we're trying to move away from that competitive nature and of course competition is good in a lot of cases but it's to a to an extent and um i don't know i think i think these are really cool changes that are happening and and good for for overall health and and i mean you've shown this in your videos of how balanced you know you can you can be and how how you can you know balance being a medical stu medical student and still like eat healthy work out you know do something you're passionate about and hopefully it's just going to keep moving towards that direction in the future Hopefully, hopefully. I'll tell you right now, though, uh, the whole step one thing, it's something that people celebrate for a second. 
it's seeming that step two is just going to take its place, but that's neither here nor there. There will always yeah. be some competition because you yeah. have to be able to rank students somehow. And research is a big one in med school. So mm -hmm. it never, I don't want to deceive anyone. Like there will still be competition for sure if you are seeking it out. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with you, man. And uh, I mean, for some people, that's the thing. And that's kind of like, it's hard to de to decide and that's that's a that's a big thing too like when you're going through it you're like do i want to go into something competitive do i not how do i make this decision and i feel like getting to that point too is, is tough because i'm at a place where like you know i could be happy in in family medicine but i could also be happy doing like pediatric surgery i don't know you know and mm -hmm. it's 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 i guess hard to define those and it's just that constant state i feel like of of doubt of what you exactly want to do and what you need to put in based off of these different outcomes that's kind of frightening i mean there's always so much to think about regardless of what you're doing yeah i ain't gonna lie you you will always have some degree of am i doing the right thing it will vary but it'll always be there at least a little bit definitely agree man um th that's like most of the questions that that people had but um i want to ask you what has been like a significant time where you've failed or or you know some kind of significant failures in your life because we see the really you know we we say on youtube we we get a lot of your advice we learn a lot of really cool things that you do and tips and stuff that you give and you share failures as well but what is i guess the the most significant and I, I, you know if you're not comfortable sharing it's completely fine but what is something that you think has had a big factor in your life and and how you think about things and and stuff like that. It's funny that you that you mentioned this because earlier you said, "What was the question? Uh, oh, why medicine?" And you're like, "This is gonna give you interview flashbacks." This actually gives me more interview flashbacks than the other one, uh, just because <laughs> I don't know. This one, the other one, always comes at the beginning. You know, it's coming. Right. But I think the best, most honest way to answer this is pretty simple. Pretty much everything that you see now, whether it comes to eating healthy or waking up early or being in this position where I'm in medical school, every single one of those was comes from a road of countless failures. You know how long it took me to actually start waking up early? I screwed up a thousand different times. When it comes to eating healthy, I've been on a million different quote unquote diets until I realized how to find balance. When it comes to working out, I have gone to both extremes where I was just brutalizing my body and not giving it any rest and just being a complete lazy piece of you know what. <laughs> yeah. So, and even things that come from like, not to get too far off a tangent, but like things related to confidence or lack of anxiety, that is all just being able to put yourself in situation after situation, screw up, realize you didn't die, you didn't your world didn't explode because you said something stupid or you got rejected from this opportunity or you, I don't know, like anything. Like you, you realize it's not a big deal if you fail. You get more and more bold with the failures you're willing to accept. One of them being like YouTube, for example. If, it, if I hadn't been in a position where I, I don't know, I don't want to put it to give a, a term to it. I don't know if exposure therapy is, is wrong. I'm going to avoid using that term just in case like it's completely inaccurate. What I'm trying to say is if you have a mindset of I'm going to allow myself to put myself in the most uncomfortable situations just for the sake of doing it, just because you know it's uncomfortable, you will get a lot of failures from that, but a lot of growth too. So all of that kind of culminates into YouTube, your first 10, 15 videos completely sucking, not getting any traction knowing that they're bad and deciding to do another one anyway and it's still bad but it's like two percent better everything you see in my life man is, is based on failure and i know it doesn't seem that way in the end when you put it all together but even now behind the scenes there's a lot of stuff that i'm failing on over and over and hopefully there will be an end product either for myself or that I, only i can see or that other people can also see that comes out of it so i know it seems like it's always been there, like the diet's always been there, the the, yeah. what are, the discipline's always been there, but it's because I screwed up for years. Like I actually still have records of my old to-do lists. I keep them for a reason. And 
every time I would screw up on one day, I would start another one over. And it would go from three days without screwing up to four to five over and over and over and over again. And I, I just I just had this obsession with like going longer, but I would have never gotten here if I didn't screw up those thousand times. I hope that answers your question. I hope it's not too abstract. No, I think that, I mean, failure in general, I think is supposed to be like an overarching theme of, of, of learning. And it takes a lot to get into the routine, right? Like you have, you've made videos on your nighttime routine, on your you know morning routine and all, like, they just didn't magically come to you in a dream or anything. It's just like, it's <laughs> exactly, from failing, exactly. from failing, from like making a good one, like a couple times, you know, one morning you realize you did something wrong in the morning. And like you said, the, the to-do list, which, which is, which that's a really interesting concept of like keeping a streak on how long you can uh, do things, do things well. But yeah, I mean, it's good to hear that, man. It, it really is because, um, it just makes it a lot more or makes a lot of people more comfortable to fail. I, I hope so. And I, I want to clarify the whole streak thing. That's actually, it's kind of a meta failure because one of the biggest things I realized is you can't keep on trying to go forever because you expect yourself to go a lifetime without screwing up once. And that was actually a behavior that I don't want to call destructive. It taught me a lot, but it was, I was being way too hard on myself. Like I, I had 12 things on my to-do list in a day I missed mm. one of them in one week, which was minor. I'm like, oh, you're trash. Like, you got to start over. Yeah. Like, I can't believe you've done this. And, and I, I didn't, I'm exaggerating. I don't, the negative self-talk isn't always yeah. that bad. And it's not something I'm very grateful to say. It's not a, it's not a big problem I have. But it, it's a balance. You know, you're going too hard with a to-do list, then you're too lazy. And it's back and forth, back and forth. Your diet is too extreme. You're, you're doing whatever you want. Eventually, you'll find yeah. it. Yeah. But you have to be willing to fail. And the best way is to take it day by day. Because if you try to get to your end product overnight, you're going to hate yourself. Because you'll never get there. And then you'll hate yourself more. And you'll try going something more extreme. And this goes for diet, for exercise, for studying, for anything related to getting into medicine. Everything, everything, everything. I'm waiting to find something in my life that doesn't follow that pattern. Because so far, everything does. Relationships, too, is a great one. Right. And Ahmad, I, I have a question about your, I guess, your journey. And this is always a tough one that, that I ask people because, like you said, we take it day by day and we, we tend to do that because I feel like that's the best way to approach things because you want to do the best you can in each day and not focus you know, too much on the future. But in your future, where do you see yourself being happy, whether it be you know related to YouTube practicing medicine you know is is your future somewhere where you want to combine these two like this is a tough question and honestly if someone asked me this i'd be like stop asking me these questions but have you had any thought towards those things you know shower thoughts that you just like mind wanders into this this galaxy way way in the future of course it's, it's a it's a very good question it's a very fine line between having a vision which is extremely important in my opinion for anything excuse me fine line between having a vision and obsessing over a goal that you cannot reach overnight. So what's the difference between the two? I think your vision should guide what you do daily and your vision should be in the back of your head, but you should never deceive yourself into thinking that it's closer than it is. Respect its distance, respect the amount of effort that it's going to take and then work at it day by day. I'm not going to say that I don't fall into this I'm going to start staring at, like, I look into the ceiling, and not literally, but for example, I'm like, why are you not here yet? Of course I do that. I, I, the goal is to do it less and less and less over time. The goal is, just like I said before, in terms of failure, this is very similar to that. So I used to do that all the time where I'm like, why am I not in medical school guaranteed yet? Why do I not have this much research yet? Why do I not have this many hours doing this? That is so unproductive and it's not constructive but it's a very conscious effort to do that less. So I, I keep on going on these tangents. Getting back to your original point of, uh, of seeing myself in the future. Uh, it's like, how, how am I planning on getting there? Have I given thought to it? I think, I remember your question now. I hope to be in a position where I am doing something that's in alignment with my values. Because that's a privilege. To be able to do something that you enjoy doing and that you feel like you're putting, putting your best foot forward. Not everyone gets to do that. 
and I, I realize how lucky I am. So I think the way I see it is I don't stress anymore because I think what I do every day are things that I'm comfortable with. So surely that can't take me somewhere too far off the right road in the future. So maybe you could say I'm underthinking it, but in my experience, overthinking it doesn't do, doesn't do too much for you. So it's a very roundabout way to answer your question, but if I had to put it in a sentence, it's I have a general idea of where I want to go. And I think I do small things every day that make sense towards that goal. Uh, who knows where it'll end up taking me, but I feel like if it's something drastic that changes, I'll be able to catch it because I'm pretty in tune with those things. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was a good answer, man. And I'm, I'm we're like, we're excited to see where you're going, man. Like we, you got a team behind you, got a family behind you, of people that support you, um, unconditionally, man. And I mean, you just keep doing what you do and, and, and that's, that's, really all that you need to be doing so i pre yeah. I appreciate you saying that man and i appreciate that you use the word uh family too because for real like people are always like why are you so cheesy no one says that but i feel like people think that <laughs> yeah. because it's true man that's that's how i feel I, i'm glad you feel the same way and i mean i feel like you're a, you're a pretty straightforward and honest guy from what i know from you arvind and I'm, I'm glad that you that you said that because i i feel the same way and i'm excited to to see you in a few years, man, I, maybe it won't even take that long, but I, I have this realization that pre-meds always are trashing themselves. I'm not saying you're going to do that or you are doing that, but it's always funny to me seeing how much potential these people have, these people, including you, and they have to, you're in this position where you are looking for medical schools to accept you. So it's a very humbling position. So no matter how good you are, no matter how much reason you have for confidence, you kind of inherently can't have it because you haven't gotten to where you want to be yet. But I can see something that I think is uh, is a little bit obstructive from your view, man. I'm very excited, and I hope we get to chat soon. Let's uh, let's keep in touch, yeah? For sure, man. Thank you. And this, this was a lot of fun, man, and I'm glad, I'm glad we were able to do this.